Hi everyone and happy new year! In today's video I was only going to talk about essay writing, however I have found it quite difficult to speak and form a thought, so I decided let's do makeup again. So I wanted to start off by answering a few questions that might have confused some people. The first one is when do you apply to HMC Davis and Assist? Targeted towards Eastern Europe mainly. So if you're somewhere outside of Eastern Europe, you would have to check on the website and make sure that your country does qualify for the program, because unfortunately if it doesn't, then you won't be able to go through with the process. So with that being said, in Eastern Europe, we would apply in grade 10, which would be the equivalent of year 11 in the UK, for example. The other question that was asked is if there are other scholarships that you can apply for. Of course, there are. And as I told you, you should be on the lookout for those. There are Facebook groups that you can join or maybe just ask friends and see if anyone's got any more information on the topic. And you can always text me and I'll make sure to look around. And if I find anything, I'll let you know. Thank you to those of you who asked more questions and I hope this is helpful. In today's video, I'm not going to explain what I'm doing with my makeup. I am just gonna go for it. Essay writing portion of HMC Assist and Davis. As you may be aware, if you've already applied for it, in the application, there is an essay that you have to write, which has changed its format from the time when I applied. We'll get into that and I'll explain how it's different and what the pros and cons in my opinion are not that it really matters because you're stuck with what you're given right now but back in the day when i applied it used to be a 1000 to 1200 word essay that you would have to fill out with information about yourself and you kind of had prompt questions that you could either answer or just revolve around because there was a list of about 10 questions that is now taken off the website i believe you didn't have to answer every single one the questions revolve around your interests and your family and getting to know more about you the changes that have been made to the application essay is right now within the application on the website you are given five questions you have to answer those in about 100 to 200 words if you were to reach the maximum of about 200 words for each essay you would kind of get around the same volume of what the essay used to be just broken down into different sections tip number one that i can give you is always make sure that you do redrafts and kind of rewrite as much as you can because you are able to do that with the application essay what i personally did is my school had a writing center where you could go and ask a teacher for help or feedback on your essay and i kind of edited around what they had to say with the application now, the 200 word questions, you can always write within a Google Doc or a Word document. It'll take to somebody to peer review or maybe just send them over to a friend and have them review them and give you a little bit of feedback. You'll be able to improve on them and make the best version possible. The second tip that I have is always follow the leading questions. To the pros and cons, I look like the biggest England fan. <laughs> So the pro of the format of the essay writing now is that if you're somebody who is better off with a straight up question that you have to answer, that is much easier right now. Back in the day, however, you would have to have a big chunk of text that summarizes all the questions into one, which is kind of difficult to achieve. So I get why they would switch. You're going to have to adapt your essay to what the current requirements are. Another tip is to take time to review the question and make sure that you've addressed every part of the question. Make sure that all the attributes are correct and personal. Making your essay personal will show your personal character and that will be beneficial once it comes to choosing between you and a different applicant. Moving on to the questions that were asked this year. Question number one was tell us about your family. This is a question that is very much expected in such an application because they want to get to know about your personal life and get an idea of what kind of person you are, what kind of people your family are, get a general overview of what you like to do and how you socialize within a family setting. I am doing this with no mirror and my lack of skills. Um, I don't know if it's a great combination. When the tell us about your family part, I personally would write about who your family consists of, what you do together, and how you like to spend time with them, things like that. Just make sure that it is very much not a generic answer. Oh, my family consists of me, my mom, my dad, and my dog, and I love them very much. And you make it personal. Speak about your own interests, what you do together, and things like that. The second question is activities you're involved with and would like to pursue in your future education. That does not necessarily have to be academic activities. 
because as the HMC website listed, they expect you to have interests outside of academics as well. That can be any clubs or sports that you're involved with within schools. A lot of schools will have swimming. That is something that you can continue in your future education in the UK or the US. And you can list that as part of your activities that you like to do. Another great example, a debate club or a geography club or a photography club. I don't know what kind of clubs you guys are involved in. I was in my school's debate team. So I listed that, I, I vividly remember that. And I was in a medical club. The third question is to explain how you spend your free time. By free time, of course, they mean time outside of school where you don't have to do any homework or schoolwork. And you're kind of just being yourself with your family, your friends, or on your own. That can be anything, including hobbies, reading books, hanging out with friends. Just be truthful, be descriptive within the character limit because that's something. Question number four is what are your specific reasons to wanting to undertake this activity? Be honest about this, but make sure you don't say things like, oh, I can't wait to move out of home or I can't send my parents on moving out. Even if that's the case, try to speak more about independence and learning new skills and kind of undertaking the experience, studying abroad, the better educational system. And question number five is what do you want your new school to learn about you, your country and your culture? How would you share that with them? For example, you would like them to learn more about your cuisine, so you would cook for them. Or you would like to teach them a dance or anything that's typical to your country and your personal culture. Then there's a sixth question that is optional, so I cannot really speak on that one. And that question has three sub questions that you can pick from. Is it necessary? Not really. But should you answer that question? Probably leaves a good impression. Be worth the shot in case one of your other essays wasn't as good. Maybe that can salvage it. Okay, so now that you've submitted your application and all of that essay writing is done, you would have gone through the Duolingo test, which is online as well. And there's links and websites that you can prepare from or kind of see the format of the test, which I'll link down below. But they're also provided from your country specialist once you're about to take the test. The essay writing that is part of that process. And that is a 35 to 40 minute with two prompts essay writing. As far as I remember, I personally had to write more about myself, which I didn't particularly enjoy, but at least it was something that I kind of felt prepared for. They're meant to be surprise questions that challenge your thinking and kind of put you on the spot to just think in a short period of time and submit something that is your own piece of work and shows your actual skills rather than somebody else's editing. Is that mean to say? My tips for that essay would be to not use as many repetitions as you naturally might. Show off your English skills, show them that you know different words and synonyms for the same word. Just don't make it repetitive, don't make it hard to read. Read over it before you submit, edit anything that you can within the 35 to 40 minute period. And once you're told to put your pen down, actually put that pen down before they disqualify you. So I think that pretty much summarizes it. This was a speedy one, which I do apologize for. If there's any more questions that I can answer, please leave them down in the comments or message me on Instagram. Everything will be down in the description box. Good luck on that. And I hope it goes well. Bye.